SCP-610-L4. Events regarding the discovery, research, and handling of SCP-610 rapidly degraded to a point where fail-safe options were being considered. For over one hour, nothing further had happened at Site A following the loss of the research teams during the seismic events in SCP-610-L3 and subsequent contact with previously unseen SCP-610 lifeforms. With the absence of activity at Site A, a remote drone dispatch was authorized in two parts. The first part would drop a remote relay device at the entrance to the Site A sinkhole, and the second part would dispatch a drone into the hole directly to relay its data into the remote relay for transmission back to HQ. Drones on site were powered by solar energy with a battery maintaining a 4-hour charge. Attached is the video log recovered from the Site A sinkhole drone before its loss. Video feed activates. Researcher's face is seen looking into the camera, applying a polished cloth to lens. This is explorative drone RSCP610-1 coming online. Systems check out. Video confirmed. Feed is good to relay station. We are testing rotors now and deploying if successful. The sound of a helicopter blade starts up as video feed begins to lift in the air. Camera tilts left and right to test band features, then directs itself toward the Site A sinkhole. Video feed is go, engines are go, links are green. Alright, sending drone down now. Audio from the outside world fades away as camera angles itself down and peers into the darkness within the sinkhole. After approximately two minutes of descent, lights on the drone activate and illuminate a roughly dug shaft. Initially, it is unclear what could have created the hole, but at a glance it would appear the shaft was created by a single event, rather than dug over time. At approximately 15 meters descent, there are traces of SCP-610 material attached to the dirt and stuck to rocks. The material is dormant but retains its texture and appearance, unlike samples from above ground level, which shrivel and dry rapidly. There is a possible connection with this material in the events last recorded during SCP-610-L3. Descent continues. At approximately 100 meters in depth, branch tunnels become visible in the walls of the sinkhole. Panning of the camera reveals small tunnels branching out at apparently random intervals, but which are not restricted to any one side of the hole. These tunnels are considered too small for any useful exploration to occur. Descent continues. Increase in density of SCP-610 material on walls is noted as depth increases. At approximately 250 meters, the bottom of the sinkhole becomes visible, and the tunnel slopes sharply, suggesting a natural formation, which was already suspected. Drone video shifts to illuminate this tunnel and drone proceeds forward through the area. SCP-610 coats entirety of the tunnel now, and care is taken to keep the drone from coming in contact with any surface. Movement is detected approximately 5 meters ahead. Lights on the drone are dimmed and weapons come online. The RSCP-610 drone is equipped with a 5.56mm machine gun, containing 50 rounds of ammo. This is meant to be used to deter wildlife away from the drone and to defend against aggression when possible, rather than to dispatch a target, although it is fully capable of handling human aggressors in small groups. Camera focus turns to the moving mass of flesh ahead at approximately 3 meters. After focus clears, the movement appears to be coming from what appears to be a deer, uninfected, wriggling in the grips of tendrils composed of SCP-610 material. The deer is being suspended above the ground with unclear intent. The drone is moved past the trapped deer while holding it in view of the camera until safely away. Nothing occurs with the deer and the drone proceeds past undisturbed. The previously fairly level ground of the tunnel displays large humps and apparently random placement approximately 5 meters ahead of the drone, approximately 30 meters past the encountered deer. Upon approach, these lumps turn out to be similar to the infected villagers who escaped from Site A into the sinkhole after the destruction of Site C. The sound of rushing water is now detected, and the drone is pushed forward. Approximately 100 meters further into the tunnel, the sound of running water is now deafening. Drone lights reveal a running stream of water potentially from one of the adjacent rivers in the area. A sample vial is placed in the water, allowed to collect, and then released with an active tracking beacon. Later recovery of this sample indicates no SCP-610 contamination of groundwater. The tunnel splits in two at this point. One tunnel leads around the river and then seems to slope downward, while the other is directly above a light source in the ceiling. The second one is selected to facilitate recovery of the drone. During adjustment of the drone's flight path, it comes in contact with a portion of the tunnel wall coated in SCP-610, causing a deep gash from the propeller of the drone which is already healing over when the camera focuses on the impact point. The drone proceeds upwards. Approximately 300 meters of upwards travel, taking approximately 45 minutes, results in the drone emerging into a windy section of mountain where it is directed to stay low. Camera panning of the area reveals what may have once been a village, long since abandoned. The precise location is unclear, but it is assumed to be in the vicinity of Site B judging from estimates and travel by the drone. 
The buildings here are coated in deceased layers of SCP-610, and unlike other buildings in Site A and Site C, which were coated in SCP-610, these buildings appear to be constructed directly from the tissue substance. After a cursory scan of Site B, it is determined there is no life here either natural or SCP-610 related, so the drone is directed back into the tunnel, as the winds around the area make aerial recovery impossible. Upon descent into the tunnel, a deep, roaring sound fills the audio, and video feed becomes choppy as something blocks the signal. During the periods in which connection to the drone is clearest, its camera and weapon are angled downward, and propellers slow in speed to allow a faster drop. Video feed becomes entirely clear for the final two minutes before feed is lost. Rushing up toward the drone from the area below is what appears to be a large human face, stretched to 20 times its proportions with no features save those created by the SCP-610 material. There are eye sockets, but no eyes. A mouth, but no teeth. The drone fires upon this rushing mass of SCP-610, but the bullets do not deter it, impact points remaining visible for several seconds before closing over themselves. There is no room in the tunnel for the drone to take evasive action, and it is swallowed by the mass. Our SCP-610 is considered lost until three hours later, when feed inexplicably returns. Video feed from the drone appears to show a series of structures, illuminated by one of the two lights on the drone. The camera pans around without instructions from the remote relays or HQ, capturing a vast number of shambling entities within the area. SCP-610 material moves over the lens of the drone, and video feed is permanently severed. Manned exploration was approved. Results are in document SCP-610-L5.